So we can take a look at another example of how to solve a quadratic equation. Now this one, it doesn't look like the same form. Right? The question asks you to solve the following, and it looks like this. Now there's a number of ways of solving this. Remember before we've looked at how to graph these things, which means I could actually graph this equation, I could graph this equation, and I could find out where they meet or find the intersection. But it turns out now that we have all the tools we need to solve quadratics by hand, we can actually do this uh, just by hand here. We don't need a calculator, uh, at least not to graph it. So let's take a look then how we do this. What we can do is we can take a look at uh, this equation and maybe try to rearrange it. Because it may not look like a nice form, but it turns out it is. I'm going to put all the x squared and x's and other stuff all on one side. So that means I'm going to move this term over to the right. If I want to move this whole term over to the right, that means I'm going to have left, well, I'm going to have a zero remaining on the left side. And I'm going to have a 1 plus x squared plus 2x, because the opposite of minus 2x is plus 2x. Now, I want to write it in a nicer form, so just so I can look at it and uh, be used to what I'm seeing. So I'm going to put the x squared term first, I'm going to put the x term second, and I'm going to write the last term last, so to speak, the one without any x's. Now I'm going to write down what a is and what b is and what c is. So now I've got a quadratic here that I'm trying to solve. I'm trying to find the zeros for it. Do you notice that this ends up being the same thing as what we've looked at before? That if I know what a is and I know what b is, I know what c is, then I can use the quadratic equation to solve this. So a is 1. b is 2. And c is just 1. So I'm going to use this quadratic equation, which tells me that the zeros of any quadratic are the following, minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that over 2a. That might seem tedious, but we can totally do it. So let's uh, try to figure it out here. So x equals, well, minus b so that b is 2, so minus b is minus 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that means I need to do 2 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 1. That's what a and c are. All that divided by 2 times 1. That's what I'm trying to do here. So if I look at that, then I can simplify a little bit. Well, I still have a minus 2 plus or minus. But now I have a square root here, and 2 squared is 4. And now keep in mind, what's 4 times 1 times 1? Well, 4 times 1 times 1 is 4. That means it's a minus here, so this ends up looking like this. Divide that by 2 times 1, which is just 2. You might be thinking, uh-oh, what happens here now? 4 minus 4 is 0. And it is. So that means that this whole thing right here cancels out, because square root of 0 is the same thing as just 0. Right, so 4 minus 4 makes it 0. Actually, maybe I'll just undo that. I'll just show you that another step, just so you don't think that we don't have to do this. It just turns out that it's minus 2 plus or minus square root of 0 divided by 2. This is really what we're doing. But square root of 0 is just 0, so therefore we have the answer of x equals minus 2. Well, plus or minus 0, but that does nothing. So just minus 2 over 2 which means we have x equals, if you reduce that, minus 2 divided by 2, that just gives you minus 1. So we only have one answer. Now what in the world might that look like? Uh, well, we can actually graph it if you want to see that. I would. I'd like to see it. So um, since I'm the one doing the videos and you're stuck watching them, then I'm going to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to try to graph this answer right here. I'm going to try to graph uh, this quadratic, x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'm going to try to show you what that looks like. So x squared plus 2x plus 1. And that's what I ended up working with. I was working with this equation. I was trying to find the solutions. Do you notice it only crosses the x-axis? Well, it only touches it once. In fact, I can ask my calculator, so to speak, for the zeros. I can say, give me the zeros for it. And I can say, well, it's around here, so I'll go a little bit to the left, press enter. It asks for the right bound, so I go a little bit to the right of that point. I go enter, and then I go to the middle, and I bet I get negative 1. I better, yes, x equals negative 1. 
You might wonder why it looks like 0 0.00001. That's just your calculator estimating values. It's precisely negative one. So trust yourself here. This is better than what your calculator tells you. Another way to check that it worked is just to do calc, which is this second and then this button here. And I can just calculate the value because I can say, well, I know what I want to check. I want to check if x equals negative one works. So I can say x equals negative one and it'll tell me the coordinates of what y is. In other words, when x is negative one, y is exactly zero. That's precisely what I wanted. So that's one way to solve it. What if though I was extra lazy and I didn't even want to do any of that stuff. I want to start with the original equation here and graph this and graph that. I could have also done that. So just to show you what that would have looked like. So rather than graph this quadratic, which by the way, we just rearranged this, got a quadratic, set it equal to zero, and then therefore found the zeros, which is what this looked like. But what we could have done if we were super lazy, uh, we could have just used our calculator here. So if I use this calculator uh, to solve this without doing any real thinking or work, what I can do then is just graph this left side. So y equals minus 2x. I'm going to graph that minus 2x. And I'm going to graph as another equation. I'm going to graph 1 plus x squared. Now if I graph both of these, it's going to look totally different. But the key thing is here is where does this graph meet that graph? In other words, where does this straight line graph meet this curvy graph? So if I'm trying to find the intersection of two, then I go to intersect. Remember, I got to it by doing second trace, which gave me calc here. I do intersect and I say, well, let's see here. They want the first curve. Is that one of the curves? Yep, I'm on that straight line. The next one, is that really the curvy one, the quadratic? Yep, that's the equation for it. It says guess, I'm gonna guess somewhere in the middle. Now, don't worry about the y value, we don't care. We just care about the x value. And look, the x value where these two meet is exactly the same as what we got before. x equals negative one. So there's a lot of different ways of solving equations. I don't want you to think that there's only one way of doing it. There's a ton of ways. This is just like a toolbox. So you just get out a different tool to do it, right? If you had like a hammer or a different type of hammer, uh, maybe either of them is good for the job. Well, same thing with quadratics. You can either just graph things or you can use a quadratic equation. Or like we looked at before, you could use a vertex form or you could use a factored form. Either way, the end result is the same. And that's the goal in mathematics is to find an answer that's useful for us. So what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to show you where the quadratic equation came from. Because a lot of people just think, you know, it looks like it just sort of came from the sky. Like, where, where did this come from? And I'm going to show you how to do it. We actually have all the tools we need now in order to do it. So that next video, it may, uh, well, it's going to require a lot of algebra, but nothing else. And the algebra is going to get a bit ugly, and then it's going to be fine. But in the end, we're going to end up and finish with this. So I'm going to show you a derivation of this.